Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Who We Are podcast. I am so excited to have with me today Sonia Ong. Thank you. Nice for to have me. you, Sonia. Thank you. And welcome to Singapore. Thank you so much. R- on this day, mm-hmm. it is your fourth day in Singapore. No, we've been we here, I think, exactly one week. Oh, nice. So mm-hmm. you're well adjusted. Yes. To the weather, to the climate, to, to the food, I, I the time know, difference. I don't know if I'll ever get adjusted to the <laughs> weather, <laughs> but the time change definitely and we've been enjoying the food for sure. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So Sonia, for those of us who may not be as familiar with you, could you share with us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Sure. Um, so I am a mom of five. I'm a wife and a mom of five. Kevin is my husband and I have... A boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. Perfect. (laughs) I don't know how you can ever plan for that. Well, everybody's next question is always, well, are you going to even it out with another girl? (laughs) And the answer is no. So let's just put that out there right now. And the age gaps are also consistent. Almost. So the oldest is 14, then 12, 10, 8. And then we had our surprise baby. (laughs) It's a surprise baby. And what got you to where you are today? You know, I started out in academia. I wanted to be um, a clinical psychologist. I loved children all the way um, since the time that I was a child. I remember one of my earliest memories, you know, going to church with my family. um, And I would just make a beeline to the nursery every Sunday. And that's where I spent all of my time. Really? Yeah. And how old were you then? Um, Probably six, seven, eight. Wow. Um, All the way up until I was a teenager, I would just spend every Sunday at the nursery because I just wanted to hold and play with babies. So, um, you know, I went I went to college, I studied psychology, I did a master's in education and counseling, um, all with, you know, the intention of getting a PhD in psychology. Um, after my master's, I moved back home to Vancouver, and I started working on the inpatient psych unit at BC Children's Hospital. Um, it was really intense, but I felt like that was my calling. And wow. I felt a great sense of reward and satisfaction doing that work, even though it was draining. I loved it. What's the day-to-day like for what you did? Okay, so it was it was very intense. We worked with children between usually 5 to 12 yeah. who had severe mental illness to the point where they mm. had to be hospitalized. And what kind of mental illness are we talking about? I I would say that the most common ones were anxiety, ADHD. Between 5 to 12? Yes. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, about sure. That later. So then you graduated and you started working there. Okay, so bit. I worked there for yeah. about five years and I was like, okay, I'm I'm going to, you know, start applying for PhD programs. And then <laughs> <laughs> I got pregnant. Kevin and I were married and we I got I had my first baby. And then I had my second baby. Mm. And then I was like, oh, uh, you know, I don't know if I can do another five plus years of s- school with these kids. Mm. And so, um, you know, I was really happy to be in that season. I've always wanted kids, as I mentioned. And so I decided at that point to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. I left my job at the hospital and for the next decade, I was a full-time stay-at-home mom and I had three more babies. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the story. Yes. So what got you started on social media? Okay. So (laughs) after 10 years of being a stay-at-home mom, which I loved and um, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, that seems like a waste of your education. I, I went to Stanford for undergrad and I went to Harvard for graduate school. And I never, that never crossed my mind because, you know, I learned so much from my, I, I'm I'm using my education to raise my children. Exactly, That's how I, I see it. I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's just all part of my journey and I never have, I've never had a single regret. Um, so 10 years, stay at home mom, um, the pandemic hits. So we're 2020, I think it was about March, April, May, yeah. and I was home with my kids. I only had four at that time, only, <laughs> <laughs> and um, they their sh- schools were shut down. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, we had a very full house. <laughs> it was... It was a really stressful time because Kevin, my husband, um, is a cardiac intensivist and he was actually running right. the COVID unit in Vancouver at the time. And we had just seen what happened in New York. Mm. That was like kind of the earliest, I think, um, in that first round of the pandemic. And there were so many questions yeah. about what was going to happen. And so it was a really intense time and we didn't know what was going to happen. 
my kids were at home with me. I was trying to support them in their virtual learning. Yeah. And it was it was a really terrible time. Like I learned very quickly that I'm not equipped to do that kind of work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I love being a mom, <laughs> but teaching is a totally different beast. Teaching and caring at the same time yes, for them. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's, yeah. So the lines were blurred. Yeah. The responsibilities were blurred. And it was just a very difficult time for us at home. I was really stressed. And um, at the same time, at that time, somebody sent me a video, a TikTok, and I had never heard of TikTok. Yeah. Um, but it was... This is 2020, 2020, yeah? 2020, 2020 yeah. yeah. And it was a video of somebody lip syncing and dancing to a Disney song in their living room. <laughs> and it was very silly. It was very casual. It's and like hot to... Yes. And it was so fun. Yeah. That was the thing. It was fun. And I thought, okay, kids, we're doing this. <laughs> And so I ran, I was like, put your, you know, computers down and take a break. Ta we're going to take a break. And so I, I felt like, I don't know, a Hollywood director or something, <laughs> you know, gathering my, cost. yes, exactly. <laughs> gathering my kids, teaching them the choreography. And it was short. This, this is all short form video, yeah. anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds. seconds. Okay. And so it was easy for them to learn. And it was really fun. Mm. And so we started making these videos. At first it was, you know, a lip sync, a, a Disney song, a lip syncing and a dance to a Disney song. But eventually we moved into, um, you know, what did we make for dinner today? Mm -hmm. Or what did I buy on my Costco run? Mm -hmm. Or what are my kids' favorite snacks? That kind of thing. So it, it, it has evolved, right? Oh, I big mean, time. It, yeah. Big time it has evolved. Um, you know, the, the Disney was fun for a few videos and then I think my kids were over it. <laughs> um, and so eventually, maybe about 10 videos in, we mm -hmm. did a trend. It was, um, you know, TikTok runs on trends. Yes. They, you know, it's songs that are popular, dances that become popular. So and those so, would have a higher chance of going viral. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we made one yeah. that told the story of our family mm. in I don't know, 12 seconds. And that video went viral. And everyone was involved. Right? Everybody Even was Kevin. involved. Yes. Wow. Kevin, I pulled Kevin into it. He, <laughs> he, to, you know, full disclosure, he did it because I asked him to. It wasn't <laughs> something that he was very excited to do. <laughs> Not voluntarily, but. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, try, I convinced him that, Aww. you know, let's do this for fun. Family so, bonding. Yes, exactly. Something to take our minds off the present stressful situation. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he did it. And um, that video, you know, got a million views or more. Wow. And um, and then our the channel just took off after that. Wow! And mm -hmm. tell us today, how many followers do you have on the different platforms? Okay, so across all the platforms, nearly seventeen million. Seventeen million. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's been just kind of it took on a life of itself, really. Amazing, Sonia. Seventeen million in essentially four years, also. Yes, four years. Yeah. And where is the biggest um, you know uh, population of your followers from? Um, so. It's very diverse. Mm -hmm. um, the The highest percentage is from the United States, mm -hmm. and then I think the next largest is Southeast Asia. Ooh, yes. So that's why you're here too. That's right. Yeah, yes. amazing. How has your approach to content creation evolved ever since? You know, ever since you also started more family centric videos. Mm -hmm. To also what it is today. Um, how has it evolved? Mm -hmm. So I would say it's a combination of. You know, at the beginning, it was just what can we do that is fun. Yeah. Um, and then when I hit about a, when I hit a million followers at the end of the first year, wow! I I had to make a choice. You know, am I going to go forward with this because it's um, you know brands were starting to reach out to do partnerships. Well, and, you've gained traction. Yes, exactly. And so I thought, you know, I sat down with my family and I said, is this something that I really want to do because mm. this will. It, it's not something you can do half heartedly. You're either all in or not in at all. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, it's you know, a real commitment. It is. It is. And it's a full-time job. Yeah. Right? Wow. So I, at that point we decided, okay, we're going to take some safety measures. We're going to, you know, think about how we can protect our privacy, et cetera. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and let's move forward and see what happens. Um, and so the content creation turned from something that we did for fun as a family to something that was more intentional and scheduled and, you know, I was just became more mindful about what I was doing to to build a brand. Mm -hmm. So that was the first step in the evolution of um, my content. Um, and so mm -hmm. even today, another part of it was establishing a cadence because there are no boundaries when it comes to social media. Some people post three videos a day, five videos a day. Mm -hmm. 
I post three videos a week. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because I'm a mom first, a stay-at-home mom, and I didn't want any of that to change. Mm -hmm. I wanted my time with my children to be protected, mm -hmm. and I didn't want this to overwhelm me and take over my life. And so I said three videos a week is manageable, and so that's what I've kept for four years. Wow, mm -hmm. that consistency. Yeah, and 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 it, you know, three a week for me means. It, it, it's it's easy to do. It's manageable for it's you. It's manageable. There's yeah. no stress. There's no burden. Wow. Um, That's amazing, Sonia, mm -hmm. considering, you know, three a week from when you had four kids and then now five kids. Yes. You know, how, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced having to balance content creation uh, and also being a stay-at-home full-time mom? Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's really helped. I, I think the... The danger of being a work from home person is to lack boundaries. Oh, yeah. All right. And so you don't want your work to interfere with your family life. And I think that's probably my biggest challenge is, um, you know, all of my work is on my phone. And so I don't want to be this parent, this mom in front of my kids who is always, always on mm -hmm. their phone. Um, and so I try to do the bulk of my work while they're at school. Mm. They go to school well, roughly between eight and three, and I do all my filming when they're at school. Wow. So sometimes, you know, when you hear my kids' voices in my videos, I've overlaid them later. I've edited their voices into the videos later. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But we always hear your, one of your daughter's voice in yes. particular. Yes. So you overlay it later. For the, for, for the first few years, all of my videos no, that's were, creative. Yeah. were edited. Yeah. Um, but now she's old enough that she can read. So I will wait for her to get home from school or we'll do it on the weekend. And she will just, uh, I'll have it scripted yes, and she will just read it and we'll get it done in one go. So one it's take, much, that's yeah, all it much takes. more efficient now because she can read. And also we're baking and cooking a lot and she loves to do it. So. Okay, so it's, it's natural in that sense, yes, right? Yeah. Yes. Amazing. And so, you know, I, I imagine it must be crazy also because you have to come up with the ideas take time to think about the different content ideas and also source uh, to do some research to see, you know, what would be interesting or trending. Yes. So what, where do you get most of your inspiration from? So I spend probably about 10 minutes a day just going like scrolling through just to yeah, as consuming, a consumer. Yes, okay. consuming TikTok. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take very long to figure out what the trends are because they'll pop up. And then once you've seen it twice, mm -hmm. two or three, done two or three times, you know that it's a trend. Yeah. And also I follow a few people who all they do is trends. Mm -hmm. So it's very efficient at this point. Um, I don't need to spend that much time learning about what uh, is trending. Mm -hmm. um, and I just go in it with, you know, with an eye of, okay, how can I apply my family life yep. to that trend? Yeah. Talking about, you know, um, the family unit, what role does your husband Kevin mm. play in in your content creation process? Because now he appears a lot more than yes. from when he first started involuntarily. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so how's the, how's the dynamics and what is his what is his role? Yeah, so it's it's changed a lot. <laughs> it's um, evolved. Yeah. It has, and he will be the first to admit that it was really miserable at the beginning. <laughs> I would, I'm sure it, it's it's not easy for anyone to just you know turn on in front of the screen. So yeah, and it took and, a lot. and also he has a very stressful and intense full time job as a physician That's and true. as a cardiologist. That's so true. the last thing he wants to do is come home after a long day of work and stand in front of a camera which, and smile, which may may not be you know a, a way to distress or relax for him. Exactly, it's not, and yeah. he doesn't have social media, so he so it is a total foreign thing to him. You know, he doesn't have an, any interest in social media, wow. really. And so he really is doing me a big service and a favor by being in my videos. But his, I, I would say mm -hmm. his attitude has evolved a lot over mm -hmm. the last few years. You know, at the beginning, he was reluctant. Mm -hmm. I, you know, he really was doing it out of love for me. Um, and I, you know, and he, I would have him do maybe once one video every few weeks mm -hmm. or, you know, just, no, just not so very often. Yeah, yeah, just to keep him you know, involved a little <laughs> bit. Um, but as my brand has grown, yeah. my business has grown. Mm -hmm. And so now I am able to contribute to our family finances. And he sees the benefits. He does, he does. And he also sees that this has become a creative outlet for me yeah. and something that has, uh, you know, that I'm proud of and that I 
Um, I can imagine. It's also maybe a source where you go to to also, you know, um, yeah, kindle that creativity and 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 spark, right? Yeah, to take exactly. your attention away from just being a full time mom. Exactly, and so he is. You know, 100% on board now, very supportive. Um, Amazing. Yeah. And so when I ask him to be in a video, he always says yes. Aww. I don't know how he's feeling on the inside, but on the outside, <laughs> he says yes. And he, he appears happy in the video. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. You know, I can imagine like during the earlier days, you know, was this uh, also maybe a source uh, of conflict uh, between the both of your attention? Because, you know, f for example, in my own example, even when I get my husband's help, whether it's to appear in some videos or to help me shoot some content, he would, you know, yeah, he would not be happy. And if I had, might have to redo a couple of times, you yes. know, it would, he would, it would cause some frustration, which I also understand. Yes. So how do you navigate all of that? Yes. So I would say that for sure that, that was how it was at the beginning yeah. for the first year or two, because I am perfectionistic. You know, right. I have the vision in my mind of what I want the result to look like. To, to execute perfectly. Exactly. And so if he isn't doing what <laughs> is in my mind, if he isn't reading my mind, I would get frustrated. Um, and then also when he sometimes helps me shoot as well. Mm -hmm. And again, I have this vision that, I know. It, it, you know, that he doesn't always have. And so um, I think what's helped a lot is I've learned after four years of doing this that it doesn't matter if the shot is not perfect. Mm. In fact, people... Appreciate, uh, enjoy. Yeah, and it's more relatable, actually, if there are mistakes or if it's messy or, you know. And so because of that, I've learned to be less perfectionistic. And so before, it would take half a day to film a video, and now I can turn one around in maybe 20 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. You run a tight ship, Sonia. I do, I do, but, and I also just accept imperfection now. Yes, and I think that that is something that is, has helped you also, you know, grow and evolve together yes. in this process. That is a really a more sustainable way of doing this. Totally. Right? And it's less stressful. Yes. Yeah. I, I think also, like, well, I'm so curious, like, is there a particular uh, content or piece of content that has been most memorable for you that <gasps> you can share with us? There are some videos that I've made, I think, mm -hmm. that have struck a chord with people in an unexpected way. Mm. And one video, um, I was brushing my daughter's hair and braiding it. Yeah. So, and we were having a conversation and she was saying, I wish I had blonde hair. Mm. And I said, why? You know, why, mm. why do you wish you had, you know, why did you, why do you wish you have had blonde hair? And she said, because all of the princesses have blonde hair. And so, we talked about how, well, there are princesses who have black hair too and brown hair and brown skin. And, um, you know, we I brought up the example of Mulan, yeah. who is not just a princess. She's a warrior. Yeah. She's She fights and she's strong and resilient. And so that video went viral. Mm. And there were, um, there were princesses who work at Disney who stitched the video and responded. Wow. And, and one of them was the first black... Disney princess. And I could not believe what, you know, what, how that uh, piece of content, yeah. And, and it, it did everything that, it did everything right. <laughs> it did everything that you had intended for and more. Oh, way more. Yes, way wow. more. Mm -hmm. And that must have really then motivated you and inspired you to also create such meaningful content through lighthearted or seemingly everyday moments. I would say, I would say yes to that. And also it made me realize that there is a responsibility behind my content that, yeah. you know, people really watch and listen and interpret. And wow. so there, you know, we are making an impact on people. So I, I need to be careful, but also very intentional about what mm. we talk about. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, Sonia, you also, you know, um, talked a little bit earlier on public life and private life. What are your considerations, especially when it comes to maybe showcasing your kids sometimes? Yes. And, you know, when it comes to their safety and mm -hmm. privacy, mm -hmm. how, how do you think about that? So way back when we decided to move forward with this, um, one of the conditions was up to that point, my kids had been in all of my videos because mm -hmm. we had, you know, I was like, well, we have and like this five, is how many years in? Just a few months in. Okay. Right. They were in all of my videos yeah. because I was documenting my, our private life at home. Yeah. 
And then when we started to grow and when we hit a million and decided, okay, we're going to move forward with this. Wow. I, we went, I went back and I actually deleted all the videos that my kids were in, all of them. And uh, even I, those that went viral. Yes. Even wow. the ones that went viral, I deleted them all. Um, because I didn't want, let's see, how would I, how should I put this? I didn't want their identities to be rooted in social media wow. and I didn't want them to be known for being part of the Ong squad because, um, to only be known as part of the Ong yeah, squad. Yeah. Before meeting, and, when they first meet people. Right. Um, and you know, I, I feel one of the biggest blessings for me is coming into this space when I was 38. <laughs> Because I already have my friends, I have my community, I have a strong sense of self, I know who I am. You have the foundation. I do, exactly. And that, I think, um, right. will help me to not be burdened or… Or absorbed into this world that's exactly that may right. maybe dangerous. It, yeah. is, it is dangerous and yeah. it is very toxic, right? Because right. essentially my job exists mm -hmm. so long as people like me, which is a terrible place to be. Yeah. So you deleted those 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 early videos. I did. And yeah. so even now, so TikTok is my biggest platform. We have 10 and a half million followers and Amazing. I seldom show my kids on there. Mm -hmm. I don't name them. Yep. Um, I think that's a big thing. Yeah. If people cannot identify a name to a face, yes. it's, it just it keeps, helps. yeah, it keeps them a little bit more um, anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, I do show them in my Instagram story sometimes. It's more of that's yeah. more of my behind the scenes, yeah. you know, family life. Yeah. Um, but in the videos that go out to the masses, mm -hmm. um, usually you'll see my kids' hands. Yeah, or different you'll hear parts. Them voices. Of yeah, <laughs> backs of their heads. <laughs> I, I love, Sonia, that you're very intentional about that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, having the experience and background that you have also, how do you think social media today is really affecting kids, whether negatively or positively? Well, so it's interesting because we just came out of a pandemic where everybody stayed home for a few years. And so I think, you know, during that time, it, social media served a great purpose of bringing people together. of Connectivity. Yes, connecting people, entertaining people while we're at home. But now that the world's opened up again, um, I would hope that people would go back to meeting in person mm. because that's what we are meant to do, I think, as humans is to relate and connect with people. Yeah. Um, and so in our family, my kids don't have phones except for my teenager who's turned, who's 15 this year. Mm -hmm. He has a phone, but the rest of them, um, we've decided to wait until they are 15 or 16 okay. at least. Yeah. We, we told them we'll have the conversation at that point. Okay. <laughs> so no problem. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we have, you know, established that expectation that, you know, a phone a phone is not something that they will have until mm -hmm. later in their teenage mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. um and then on the other hand or on the same token we invite friends and community into our home whenever they want you know bring people in and that's how we want to relate to other people so yeah. they know that that's our messaging and they love their friends and you know, we support that wholeheartedly. Yeah. You know, Sonia, you also talked a little bit earlier about validation and essentially, you know, uh, the work that you do essentially almost depends on how much people like the content. Yes. How has that been? And for you personally? Yes. So early on, I would say it was very shocking, yeah. right? Because strangers are getting on there and they remain anonymous so they can say whatever mm -hmm, they want to. Mm -hmm. And people it's really... Like keyboard warriors. It is. In the worst way, in the worst way, people say things that are so horrible that I wouldn't even want to uh, repeat it here. And so at some point, I just stopped reading the comments <laughs> completely. Yeah, that's a boundary that you draw for it yourself. Is, yeah. It is. And I feel like that has single-handedly allowed me to stay in this business. Because, and to keep you sane. Yes, sane and to not feel like, you know, totally... I don't defeated. Right. Yeah. And so I will put when I post my content, I'll stay on there for about five or ten minutes to respond to the first people who comment because yeah. those are usually your followers. Yeah. And they're all positive. Yeah. And then after that, I'm out of there for good. And you make sure that you stay out of there. Oh, yes. It's kind of a it's like a discipline. It is a discipline it is. because it is it can be tempting sometimes for you know, sure. to be able to just ugh, for sure. take a peek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you know, it's almost like this dark 
black hole that yes. you get consumed because once you start yeah and just, I and I just have to read one negative comment and it will ruin my entire day I am sure you're yeah. human and, yes. and it's so hard to be able to yeah sometimes compartmentalize or separate it or even not take it personally because exactly. I, I think some of the comments can be really personal I mean yes. talk of all the platforms have in, from what I've also heard is the most notorious for um keyboard warriors and mean comments. Yes, and it also depends on how viral you go. Like the more views you get on a video, the more negative comments yeah, there'll I be mean, on there. Yeah, I mean, there's also a proportion Yes, of, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I, I actually personally find that TikTok, that Instagram is the worst for me. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, tell me more. Um, you know, I think each of the platforms, okay, the followings are slightly different. Yeah. Um, on, on TikTok, I have a, you know, it's a very, it's a varied audience. Yeah. So you've got young You've got middle age, you've got old. And so um, I get a lot of comments on there from followers and those comments get pushed to the top. Mm. So it's really, so even if I read the first 10 comments, it's usually positive because right. they're from followers. Um, on Instagram, I get a lot more strangers. Mm. And so sometimes those can be really nasty, mm. those comments. And sometimes I think it's the effect of people seeing a couple of mean comments and then just jumping That's on true. and adding to That's that. That's true. So that can be pretty unhealthy too. Mm. But what have been some of the most heartwarming comments that you've received, you know, through the four plus years yeah. journey that you've been? So I can think of a couple. There's yeah. one woman who I met who is in her mid 90s. Wow. And Wait, she, you met? Yes. You met in person? Yes. And she watches my TikToks and my Instagram stories every single day. <laughs> and even though you don't post every single day, Sonia. No, the stories are more often than okay. my videos. Yes, so yes. she either watches my videos or she's watching my Instagram wow. stories. She's and, an avid fan. And yes. And that to me is, was so heartwarming that somebody at her age, you know, that this is entertaining her and giving her. Um, you know, she, that this is giving her joy. You're bringing her joy yeah. and light, you know, yes. to her days. Wow. Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. And then just, you know, messages from moms who say, you know, thank you for bringing, you know, thank you for entertaining me mm. during COVID. Mm. I think that was a really hard time for moms yeah. being at home with their kids. And, and you can 100% relate to that. Exactly. Yeah. Like creating lighthearted, funny moments yeah. out of very simple mm -hmm. situations. I think that was relatable to a lot of moms. Oh, yeah. you know, Sonia, it's so interesting and you really have, um, you're blessed to have the background in psychology and mm -hmm. education as well. How do you try to weave that into maybe some of the content uh, that you do and ideas you come up with? I would say that it's not something I intentionally do, but I my education is my education and my experience is my experience. And so everything that I do mm -hmm. in my content brings all of that in with it. Um, so my time at the hospital, mm -hmm. um, working with those kids, I've l I learned a lot about how to relate to other people and how to understand and listen. And so I know, I think one of my skills is knowing how a piece of content or how words will affect other people and make other people feel. Yeah. And that's, you know, kind of what you're going for as a content creator is you want to make people feel. Mm. That's how to engage them. Um, that's how to draw them in. So it's almost like Tugging at the emotional heartstrings. Kind of. And, yeah. and I do it through storytelling. Wow. Yeah. So I try to have kind of an opening line that draws people in. Then you develop the story in the middle and then you kind of have a punchline at the end. What do, is there a secret sauce to you? Like, you know, the timing that a TikTok video should be before it becomes, yeah, before you lose the attention of your yeah, audience? I, I think it all has to do with you know, first five seconds, yeah. have you done enough to draw somebody in to stick around right. to make them want to see the outcome? Yeah. So wow. yeah, first three to five seconds, I, I would say are the most important. Mm -hmm. How do you think then, you know, like what have you discovered about yourself and maybe what personal growth have you experienced through this very interesting journey? So one thing that I never knew about myself in 38 years was that I am a creative person. And I know that sounds crazy because that's technically what my title is now is a content creator. Yeah. I never knew I had this creative streak wow. at all. Wow. In fact, I thought I was the most unartistic person. And, you know, I thought I, I went into social sciences because it was a science. Um, <laughs> so the, I think that part is the most shocking thing. Um, but I really enjoy it. I mean, this I, and you're good at it. Clearly, I, I've, I've found something that I, I have the skill set for. It's, wow. it's very odd. Wow. <laughs> that, um, 
but yeah. you didn't necessarily get the education in. No, in exactly, yeah. exactly. And yet, it's been this whole life journey that's culminated into um, this content creator role. Um, I I don't regret any of what I've done before. Yeah. Um, my education, my work in the hospital, my ten years as a stay at home mom have all equally contributed to my content creation. For sure. I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You started. Con how old were you when you started? Content creation. Uh, 38. 30, 38. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone out there who is also maybe in their 30s or 40s and looking to discover their purpose or their calling or something that would excite them again? Because if I may say, Sonia, I think if, you know, usually people at this age in their mid-30s or 40s, we tend to think that, okay, you know, this is who I am. I've almost discovered who I am and who I'm not, mm. my strengths, my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So to discover something that, almost like changes to tra the trajectory of your career and life path Yes, must be, you know, surprising yet encouraging. Yes. And what I would say to women in their 30s and 40s and even women who've, who are moms and who've had kids and who stay at home and who haven't been in the workforce yeah. for a long time, yeah. I would say that the sky is the limit. Anything is possible. And you know, middle age is something I think people think of as an end stage, but really, I feel like I have never been happier wow. now. And I've been happy. I, I would say, you know, I've I've been very blessed my entire life, but I just feel like I have hit my stride. I'm doing something that I'm good at and that wow. I derive a lot of satisfaction from and reward. And I I'm not even sure that this is it for me. Wow. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful to to also be in this stage of life where, you know, you're just, the world is your oyster. Mm. And to have that view that you're excited for what's to come, mm -hmm. excited to explore, whether it's within yourself or even externally. Yeah. And when I was in Malaysia last week, I met with Tony Fernandez, who is the CEO of A Asia. Air Asia and Capital yeah. A. And one thing that he told me that was so impactful and that I will carry with me moving forward is the only thing that's worse than failure is regret. Wow. And I the thought, only thing that's worse than failure is regret. Wow. And so I can see why he is so successful is because he just moves forward taking all of the risk. And, and just trying. Yeah. And I guess to him, what he's learned is, you know, wow. no risk, no reward. Mm. And so I think I am going to try. I am a very risk averse person, <laughs> um, but I am going to try to remember that moving forward. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with all of us. You know, going back to kids and raising kids, you know, mm -hmm. Sonia, I'm so curious also from your point of view, uh, how has it been? And because you raise five kids and they're all essentially in different stages yes. of their childhood. Yes. How do you manage all of that? So I would say that the hardest by far, because everybody always asks, how is it with five kids? I don't know how you do it. You, you know, you're a super <laughs> mom, superhero. And honestly, Five, to me, has been easier than being a mom of one. Mm, wow. And, and you can say that. Yes. <laughs> my, my, I struggled the most when I had my first child. And that is because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. I had no experience. I, I just, I, all I knew was what I read in books, which that's a terrible source of, <laughs> of parenting, <laughs> I, mean, I would that, say. That's <laughs> a terrible only source yes, of yes, parenting. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I, experience is the best. Um, and I had none of that. And mm. so I, my poor first child, we just didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> I had so many rules. You know, I was so structured. and Uptight, there, well, Yes, yeah. tired and just no grace. Mm. No grace for that first child and or for myself as a first-time mom. Yeah. Um, and so now with this baby number five, who is our surprise— it is just such a joyful experience. Wow. And I know, because now I know the child's going to be fine. The child is going to be okay, whether I, he goes to bed at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. He's going to be fine, whether mm -hmm. he drinks his milk or he doesn't. Wow. He's going to be okay. And so I don't need to feel stressed about following a certain regimen. Um, my goal now is to have joyful moments with the child. Wow. Yeah. And how do you also think about, you know, like raising kids through the different stages? Ages and stages? Yes. So, so far, so our oldest is 14, turning 15 this year. And so he's kind of in, you know, he's reached his teen, teenage years. Yes. I would say that now is, now the hard part starts. 
<laughs> yeah. The real challenge the, begins. Yeah, the re- parenthood really begins because when they're young, it's kind of like raising a pet. <laughs> you're just you're just taking care of you're tr- you're trying to keep a little person alive, alive. Yeah. exactly. Um, but when they right. start, to, you know, when they turn about twelve or thirteen, they start having big feelings, big thoughts, and uh, you know, we, there's a lot of negotiation that happens after mm-hmm, that that mm-hmm. taxes me mentally and psychologically. Mm-hmm. And so Kevin and I have had you know, to sit down a lot and have discussions just among ourselves about, okay, how are we going to handle this situation with our teenager? Right. Um, whereas before it was just, you know. This, Keeping them alive. Exactly. <laughs> Could he need, you know, did you remember to bring this the kid's jacket? You know, those were the <laughs> That's biggest all. issues before. No, which is true. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have also seen the interactions between you and some of your kids and also your teenager, your mm. eldest teenager included. And it's so heartwarming to see that, you know, you guys are such a close-knit family in that sense. How did you cultivate this culture within your family? Oh, that is a great question. You know, and I've got to say, I feel like it's more of a blessing than anything because I don't know if it was very, I don't think, I don't know if it was intentional. Mm. You know, I'm so grateful. I think you're right that we are Mm close-knit, that our family life is kind of the center of everything. Um. Maybe Kevin and I are very committed to each other. And I wonder if that is kind of the trickle down effect to our kids is, you know, when, when Kevin first comes home from work, the kids know that they need to give us 10 minutes. (laughs) Just (laughs) by ourselves. Just by ourselves. They can be around. No, of course. But then, you know, the attention is to each other. Yes. Like let dad and mom just talk for 10 minutes without you guys interrupting and climbing all over dad because wow. he just came home and you know let us just finish our discussion first and wow. so I, I you know and this I ritual has really existed since the kids were much younger yes wow. yes and I, I don't is this controversial I don't know that our marriage comes first amazing <laughs> no it, it 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 is respectable because in theory that is what a strong marriage and a strong family should do. However, to be able to live it out Mm. with five kids, Mm -hmm. Sonia, Mm. that's admirable. Mm. Wow. So that's something that is a non-negotiable. Yeah, and and the kids accept it. I mean, it's a rule. So they grow to learn to work around it. Yes. Wow. I was speaking to a marriage counsellor and she takes care of clients in Singapore and Malaysia. Okay. And she was also telling me that um, a lot of marriages are falling apart because the parents are just overly consumed by mm. the kids. And it almost becomes like uh, they, all they do, they're just like partners, like sending the, the kid mm. from one uh, curriculum class to another mm. and things like that. And so they just distance themselves and end up not spending time with mm. themselves and with each other. Mm. So that's why, that, that is also one reason why I wanted to ask you, like, how do you keep your marriage strong with five kids? Yeah, well... I think, you know, Kevin and I, we have very similar interests. So, f- for example, we are homebodies. Yeah, we, so that helps. It it totally helps. Yeah. You know, Kevin, when he comes home at night, we don't have any pressure or desire to go out. Like social. Socialize yes. with other people. Mm. Um, we prefer to spend our free time at home. Mm. So... Um, we like watching movies. We like, I mean, even if we're sitting beside each other on social media yeah. in silence, yeah. we prefer to be together. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think that helps just having similar interests and lifestyle. And we're just, we're friends. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we're... <laughs> that's the foundation of your relationship. Yeah, it is. And we enjoy spending time with each other. You know, sometimes on the when, when we're home on the weekends, um, Kevin will be like, okay, I need to go fill up the car with gas and then I'll be like oh I'll just come with you Aww. so we'll just you know do very small simple things like that together or if I say I'm going to go out and get a cup of coffee he's like okay yeah let me I'm going to come with you Amazing. so we'll just go do that ourselves and it's this little x that compound very little but but if they're consistent enough they mean something absolutely yeah Wow. Thank you for that reminder. And, you know, also I would love to ask, you know, if you have any advice for young parents who are Mm. also tuning in to you. And, you know, you being a mom who is having a successful career and also, in my opinion, successful in raising and building a strong family and seeing what I've seen, the interactions with you and your kids. Mm. What advice do you have for us? Okay, so 
I can think of two things. One is that children are more resilient than we can imagine. So I remember, you know, with my firstborn, I was so rule bound. You know, there wasn't a night that he went to bed past 7 p.m. You know, I started at six o'clock. I was already getting ready for, you know, bath time, story, you know, pajamas, everything, milk, and <laughs> seven o'clock lights out. And I was so strict and that created a lot of stress for me, for my husband, and probably the child. Um, by number five, so my number one didn't sleep a day in our bed because I was so strict about his <laughs> sleep routine. Independence. Yeah, yeah. And I sleep trained him, everything. Number five has never slept a day in his crib <laughs> to this day. And he's two. He just has been in my bed since he was, you know, well, you know, since he was big enough for yeah. it to be safe to, for him to be in my bed. But my point is I've realized that the priority when it comes to parenting is to instill joy in the child. Oh. And people think that it's about raising kids right. And, you know, to some extent, it is important to teach them, you know, routine and discipline and all of that stuff. But ultimately, my goal and my prayer for my children is that they will grow up to be happy. And, and I've learned that now as a mom of five versus when I was just a mom of one. Yeah. And, you know, having spent five years in a children's hospital mm. taking care of uh, children from the ages of 5 to 12 mm -hmm. with mental illnesses, mm. what do you think is important as caregivers and parents to young kids mm. for them to grow up well and healthy? So this would, my answer is more because of what I learned when I was in graduate school and my experience there. But I would say that the most important thing is the child's relationship with their caregiver. And whether it's that the caregiver is the mom or the dad or the grandma or the nanny, whoever yeah. it is, if that is healthy, and by healthy I mean if the child feels safe. And securely attached. Exactly. Securely attached where all of his needs are met and he can expect his needs to be met because right. the person is responsive to him. Right. Then that sets the child up for healthy relationships in life. You know, Sonia, what would you say also to someone who's listening to you and, you know, is in the midlife where he or she is wondering, is there more to my life? Is there more joy and mm. purpose to my life? Mm. Yeah. What would you encourage them with? I would say for me, you know, even before this whole social media thing became a thing four years ago, I was really happy as a stay-at-home mom. And even though that sounds limiting and small, it was a big world for me because I found a lot of joy in raising my children and in connecting with their communities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would say whatever life stage you are in, you can create happiness and joy and life, you know, around you. Mm. And you don't have to have all the lights and the glitz and the glamour to be happy. Yeah. Um, that said, if somebody has a dream, I would just hearken back to Tony Fernandez's <laughs> yes. advice that, you know, don't regret. Don't wake up when you're 55 and say, oh, I wish I had done this. Wow. Because for yourself and in your life, you you, you actually pivoted. I did, but I was lucky enough that it just happened. It like fell in my lap. So I can't even say that I was ambitious about it. But Sonia, you know, so many times we might limit ourselves for an opportunity that fell on our lap and mm. we just talk ourselves out of it mm. because for yourself, it's almost like you you did not know that you had this creative streak in it's all, true. all characteristic in you. And you might have talked yourself out of it like, no, it's not for me. It's right. true. But, I think what you said is true. Yeah. Something something happened and I ran with it. Exactly. And yeah. you had the courage to run with it, mm. even though it's completely unfamiliar mm. and it's not some maybe not a characteristic that you yourself had known you had within you. What is the biggest lesson that you have learned through your own journey? Mm. I would say that I feel like there is a calling on my life that is outside of my control because I didn't plan for any of this to happen. I didn't, I wouldn't even, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a goal. Mm. I wouldn't even say I worked for it. Yeah. 
you know. And so um, I, I think... I think God who is in control yeah. has a purpose here. Wow. And I and I don't know what it is. And that's okay. Wow. Well, thank you so much, for Sonia, for sharing your journey, your stories, and for inspiring us. Do you have any last words of encouragement for all of us or someone who is maybe looking to also trying out content creation? Any warnings for us? Um, I would say if you want to be a content creator, anyone can do it. Truly, anyone can do it. And I mean, I built my whole platform on very mundane concepts and themes like today I'm going to give my kid a snack, right? I mean, that's not exciting at all. But if you spin it a certain way, it can be engaging and interesting content. So what I would say is anybody can create content. Um, Two things to keep in mind. One is to just take the risk. It feels like a risk at first because you risk acting and looking like a fool. It's unfamiliar. It's unfamiliar. It's embarrassing. Yeah. And but you know and maybe even cringy in yes. the beginning. Oh, cringy oh, beginning and now. <laughs> Are you sure? It's always cringy. <laughs> so, you know, take take the risk. And then secondly, go in there with boundaries. Right. Um, you know, know and expect that people are going to attack you and um, you know, just be prepared that way mentally because your health and your mental health is more important than anything else. Amazing. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Sonia. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in Singapore. And we hope to definitely see you back again with you thank and your family you. I soon. hope so too. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia.